Hey there, how's it going everybody? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be learning how to update GIS content of our ArcGIS Online organization account. So in a previous tutorial, we learned how to upload an item, convert that item into a feature layer, and then add the feature layer onto a map. So uh, if you have noticed, we uploaded these contents as point layers, so as point features. And uh, it's not quite well to, lab to label such things as districts which cover a large area, especially within a country as points so the best way to do that would be to use our polygons so now this is what i want to correct within this tutorial we're going to be learning how to how to remove uh, that layer which, which was filled with points and then add a relevant layer which is which is all polygons so this is what we're going to be basically doing with this tutorial so the first thing that you do like whenever we're working with any gis project is to import is to connect to your gis so in this tutorial let's just get started to it so i'm just going to import some gis modules here so that we get started so i'm just going to import our uh, gis uh, gis dot gis uh, import gis and then i'm going to import a display module from the python library which is going to help us display display uh, whatever we're going to be dealing with in a more fashionable manner and then uh, once I import that I'm just going to do this in one cell and then I'm going to actually uh, request to log in to my organizational account because without logging in then that basically means we cannot do any changes because we are not authenticated to do that so I think I forgot something I'm supposed to put double quotes here and then I put a comma and then I separate that and then I enter my username Then once I'm done, then I execute this block. So let's just leave that to execute. Okay, so now we've been prompted to enter in our password. So I'm just gonna enter my password like that to the prompt box. Uh, oops, let me just make sure I type in the correct password and then I hit enter. And then it's going to authenticate us into our online account. Oops, I think I ran into an error. Let me try to see what error. Invalid username or password. I think there's something wrong with my username or password. It's African surveyors. Okay, let me just try to rerun that block and then enter correct password. Let's just hope that this time we don't get any errors. Yep, and we didn't get any error. Okay, so now let's move on to the next stage. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, since now I'm now logged into my account and, uh, and and the web map that we published previously was not public yet. So I, so that basically means I'm the only one who can only see that web map. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and search for that web map in order for us to actually see and know what we're dealing with. So let's just uh, type search for the web map. Here. So in order for us to search through the web map, what we have to do first is to define a variable which is going to store our results. So I'm just going to name that search result. And then I'm going to call the GIS uh, library to tell it that I'm looking for content. And what do I want to do this with this content? I want to search. And what do I want to search for? The thing that I want to search for is a title. And what's the title for it? So when we uploaded that, uh, like, that feature layer and then create a map. We named the map Zimbabwe District. So we're just going to be searching for a map which is called Zimbabwe District within our organization. And then we put a comma there. And then I'm going to specify the item type which I'm looking for and tell it that I'm looking for a web map. And then when that is done, I'm going to call now the display uh, the display function, which which I'll pass in the parameter for the search result as a parameter so here remember our display function helps us uh, display things in a more stylish way rather than having to return uh, JSON formats which barely mean anything or if you're not uh, really really that deep into programming so let me just execute this block and see what we have so yeah so now we have uh, figured that uh, we have something here so it returned this result item type Zimbabwe district web uh, map with this owner so I'm actually the owner of this web map so that this basically proves that we have uh, we have an item with this uh, title within our organization okay 
so now what we need to do now is now we need to read the map so that we are able to see uh, what I'm talking about when I said uh, we had uh, point features uh, within the map so let me just say uh, now we need to read the web map to read the map map and then produce a web map object so let me just execute that so now what I need to do now is we need to define a new variable again which is going to store uh, which is going to store our search results so let me just say a uh, web item and then that will be equal to search result result and then I'm going to put an index of zero so remember what we did here is we searched for an item and then now we're now passing that item into a web into a web map object in order for us to be able to visualize and then I've 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 added an index here which which allows me to get the first item within the list so this index basically uh, represents that um, so basically represents uh, like the item the specific item that we need so if in this result for okay so in this search result if we had uh, quite a number of results say maybe we have we had uh, about five results and then we only need to pick one we could basically use these indexes to, to be able to filter through and uh, be able to pick which result do we want to represent on the map okay so I think I forgot to import another library above which helps us uh, to map using web maps but that's not a problem you can always import any libraries even though when you're midway within your project as long as you import them before you actually use them so um, yeah, I'm just going to import a library which I need to use so I'm just going to say I need to import a mapping library so I'm just going to define that and say uh, from ArcGIS dot mapping this time I want to import a web map so this is basically the web map object which helps us to be able to, uh, to actually work with web maps within our, within our Jupyter notebooks so now I'm going to define a variable again it's going to be called webmap.obj so this is just a web map object which is going to store the web map uh, the web map function from the mapping library and then I'm going to pass in now this variable which contains our search results with the index of 1 so I'm just going to copy that in order for me to avoid repetition and then I'm just going to paste that in and then now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to actually need to display an interactive widget which is going to show me the map so I'm just going to call in that variable again web map underscore that obj so well we wrote uh, quite a lot of code here in the cell but usually if you're quite confident with your code it's usually uh, easier to write like all this code bunched up in one cell but if you're not sure and you like to take and you like to take things step by step i recommend that you write uh, each uh, you write each code block in a single cell in order for you to be able to debug in case you run into some errors okay so here i'm just gonna put out some comments which are gonna help you guys actually see what we do what we'll be doing so i'm just gonna say this is going to display the web uh, map in an interactive widget Okay, so let me just execute the cell block and see what is going to be produced. So let's just leave it to render that and then now it's loading the web map. So let's just give it a few seconds. Well, it's trying to connect to the internet and trying to get the web map. Okay, so now it's uh, it has actually loaded the base map and it's, it's only left with displaying this uh, this feature, these feature layers that we are that we actually contain within our search results. So if I scroll down, you see that these feature layers we've actually been added. So remember, you know, so remember in the previous tutorial when you uploaded an item, uh, our map, uh, our web map actually looked like this. So these are our basic, uh, these are our basic uh, point layers which are uh, which were contained within our organization. Okay. So now what we need to do now is we need to we're just gonna run a basic uh, query here, which is going to display like all the details of a web map. So in order for us to display a details of a web map, I'm just gonna put some mark down here and uh, details for a web map. 
So in order for us to display the details of a web map, so basically a web map contains of layers and we need to know uh, like the properties of that layer within within a web map. So in order for us to do that, what we need to do since we here we declared this as a variable which is going to be storing our web map function uh, and display this to our within our notebooks. I'm just gonna copy that again and then I'm just gonna paste it in inside. So what we need to do now and if we need to do it, we need to view uh, the details of the layers which are contained within a web map. What you only need to do is to call the layers property. So if I, so I'm going to type uh, this uh, this variable name and then put it and then put a full stop and then type in layers. It's basically going to print out all the details which are contained uh, within this web map. So let me just execute that again, and then you see that it's it's going to return a JSON uh, format for this web uh, map so as you can see here this JSON format is quite a lot of detail we have an ID we have a layer type we have the URL to the service which is this one so and then we have uh, some, some, some interesting we have some, we have some interesting properties like the titles the proper districts and then we have the item ID and then the, then the pop-up information which actually comes up if we were to click on this and then we have yeah, I think we have quite a lot of detail here, but I'm not going to go into this detail and so I'm going to leave this detail for another tutorial. So this is basically how you get at the details of a web map. So what I now need to do here is I now need to, since we said we wanted to replace this feature layer with a polygon, what I now need to do is to search for the, is to search for the, for the polygon app. For the polygon layer which is already within our organization account so if you haven't uploaded your own uh, you haven't uploaded your own polygon data set you can do that in, into your Argus online organization account and if you don't have data to upload i've also added uh, a link in the description which contains uh, the files we which contains a zip file which you can use to upload to your organization account for the purpose of this tutorial okay so let me just go right here and then i'm going to type some markdown here so that we don't forget what we're doing. So I'm just gonna say search for replacement layer. So this is basically going to be the layer which is going to be replacing those points. So what I'm going to be looking for here is going to be a polygon data set. So now what I need to do is, remember we already searched here. So now what I need to do is I need to override the search item and put a new item within that variable. So I'm just gonna repeat that variable again say search result and for the search result it's basically going to type where I type above I type above but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change what I'm going to search for so I'm just going to be searching for something with a title named so I already know what title I gave to my polygon data set I gave it a this title Zimbabwe district and then I named it a uh, poly poly oops poly I think I have a problem with spellings. Okay, so polygon like that. And then, so what you have to do here is we have to, now I'll put a comma and tell it that I'm looking for an item type of a feature, of a feature service, oops, of a feature service. And then I need you to display the result of the first thing that comes up. So I'm just gonna say result. And then I need you to display only one item and then I'm just going to execute that and it's basically going to print out Oops, search results is not defined Oops. so here I think I made a mistake I typed in search results instead of search results I'm just going to correct that and then execute that again and now we see that we have our polygon data set which is already here so as you can see I already uploaded this on the, on the March the I already uploaded this on March the 12th, 2021, and it already has five views. Oh. Okay, so this is basically going to be the layer which I'm going to be using for for the replacement. Okay, so now that we have found the layer which we're going to be using as the replacement, we now need to remove this already existing layer which we've just found here. So in order for us to remove, I'm just gonna I'll type in a few markdown here. To, to remind us of what we're doing, so we're just gonna say remove the old 
the layer and then I'm just gonna run that okay so we're gonna remove the old layer so remember this old layer was contained in this variable which we named webmap.opobj so I'm just gonna call that variable and then now I'm going to be calling the remove layer uh, function and then I'm going to pass in these as a parameter as a parameter to that and then I'm going to tell it that I need to remove the layer with an index of zero okay so this might be quite confusing but it's basically what we described above so I'm sure you remember this web map obj this web map underscore obj uh, variable which we had declared uh, somewhere around here which contains uh, which contains like these layers and then now I'm just telling it to remove the layer with the index of zero from that web map so so if I'm to execute this it's going to basically remove that but I haven't called any function to for, in order for me to actually visualize this so nothing's going to happen here so now what I need to do is I now need to add a new layer and, and also change the title so I'm just gonna put some mark down here and then we'll say uh, add the new layer uh, convert that to markdown and then just execute that so in order for us to add a new layer I'm going to call the same variable again because I don't want to be adding a lot lots of variables and that will just uh, get us confused so now what I need to do is I need to add uh, a layer and to do that I just need to add the add layer function and what do I pass in inside so what do I pass in I just need to pass in the new layer name and then I tell it that I need the layers to be uh, of index of zero like that and then I'm just gonna put some a few options which are just basically going to help us uh, like to change the title so I'm just gonna pass this as JSON and then I put uh, these this opening uh, it's opening curly braces and then I put the title like that and then oops I think this is supposed to be double quotes and then I put the title like that and then I put the colon and then now I'm supposed to type in the name of the layer which I want to add so I'm just going to add the district I'm supposed to put uh, quotes there the district in Zimbabwe this is going to be the title of my of my web map yeah so now that I've changed that I'm just basically going to execute that oops okay sorry I think I made a mistake here I rushed onto the other steps because I'm I think I'm very eager to finish this tutorial so let me just go back a little bit and finish some of the steps that I left out behind. Okay, so we might have noticed that we added a new variable here which is called new layer but we didn't actually define that variable and if, and if we were to execute that it's, good, it's basically going to produce an error so let me just show you what, I, what I'm talking about here I'm just gonna run into an error if I execute that as you can see our name new layer is not defined so what we need to do now is we need to define uh, this uh, new layer as a variable so how am I going to do that so I'm just gonna gonna go back a little bit and then I'm gonna declare this as a variable so I'm gonna type in new layer and what is that going to be equal to so I'm just gonna go up a little bit here so remember when I mentioned that I'm I was going to override this search result with a new layer which I'm going to search for which is this polygon data set so this is what I'm going to pass in uh, for the variable in order for us to be in order for us to have a replacement layer so what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to pass in that search result so I'm just going to say search result and what, I, and what do I need? I need the index of the first item which, which appeared within the search result even though we had one item but for the, for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to be showing you how to get, uh, how to get a specific item within, within the search result so I'm just going to query that and say I need the first item within the search result and what do I need to do with that item? I need to see the layers so I'm just gonna pass in the layers property there and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove this line so basically going to copy that and keep it for keep it for layer use 
and then I'm just going to execute this block where we have defined our new variable. Okay, so now that you've seen this, so basically this is, is the URL to this uh, to this uh, polygon dataset, which has now been stored within this variable. So now what we need to do is, um, since we have already removed that, so I'm just basically going to going to put back our line here which is actually going to change this uh, which is actually going to change uh, which is actually going to change this title so let me just execute that now and we see that we won't run into any errors okay so now that you've seen that this true value it basically means that this expression that we just ran has been executed successfully without any errors if it was to return false or an error value then that means there was going to be a problem within this uh, within this uh, within this within this code above okay so now I'm just going to run a little bit of some like some verification check within my notebooks in order for me to verify that this layer was actually removed and this layer was actually added onto our web map so I'm just gonna say uh, type some mark and I say check the layers on sorry yeah, on the web map so I just want to check the layers which are available on the web map and for me to do that I'm just gonna loop through uh, loop through all the layers so I'm just gonna type a for loop so I'm gonna say for layer in web uh, map dot ob sorry underscore obj within their layers I'm just gonna look through and see what we have. So I'm just gonna print out the layer uh, title, and then I'm just gonna put a string here, which is going to help me to separate the layer title and the URL. So I'm just gonna do that, and then so put some styling, which is going to help me to separate those two. And then I'm just gonna put a plus sign and tell me that and tell it that I now need the URL. Okay, so most of you might be confused um, to say where is he getting this uh, like this layer title and layer dot URL. So remember when you returned this JSON file, so this JSON output here, I I, I actually told about a lot of properties which are contained within this JSON within this JSON file. So as you can see here, we have a URL here which basically contains the URL to that layer. And then we also have the title here. So in order for the, us to actually see if this was removed, we would actually call those basic two properties. And these are just basically going to help us see some of the properties within our layer. So I'm just gonna execute that. And we just noticed that uh, this district in Zimbabwe layer is the same name that we gave here that we replaced uh, with the old name of the layer. And then this is the URL to the layer. Okay, so actually, I could uh, so actually I could actually uh, add more properties so that you guys get an appreciation of what I was talking about. So which items could I actually get here? So let me just say uh, if I was going to basically going to get this item ID. So let me just copy that, and then we actually add this to that, and then I'm just gonna say plus. And then I'm going to return this as a string again. It's going to be like that. Map it out there. And then say plus layer dot paste that item ID. So it's going to basically add an item ID to our like to our output result. So let me just execute that and show you how it's going to look like. So as you can see, we now have this item ID. Okay, so I'm just doing this for the, for the sake of this tutorial, but you could actually uh, put some styling here so that you actually see uh, what I've been talking about. Okay, so finally, now that we've confirmed that our web map only contains one layer, which we have replaced with the old layer and, uh, and used the new layer to replace the old layer. So now it's time for us to actually update uh, our web map. So I'm just gonna put some mark down again and say now we can update the web map. So remember our, map, our web map still looks like this because we haven't updated anything yet 
and we haven't added any layer onto the web map since we removed the old layer which was actually there so let me just run this code and then we actually put some code which is basically going to update so in order for us to update we basically only need to call the update uh, basically to call this update method and then we just pass in some parameters which we need to update okay so let me just uh, type in a few code here remember our variable which you defined which was web map underscore obj which is the web map object so this i'm basically going to call this because this is the one which actually contains the new layer which i've just added again and then i, I just need to call in the update method and then I only need to pass in a few parameters which are going to be used for updating our web uh, map. So what I need to do now is I need to update a few properties within our web map. So I'm just going to say item properties, properties like that. And then I'm going to pass in a JSON which is going to contain the information which I need to update. So I need to update the title of that uh, of that web map. So what, what name can I possibly give to this title? I think I'm just going to name it uh, District in Zimbabwe. And then I'm just going to put an updated there. And then what else do I need to update? So I think I'm going to change the thumbnail, the thumbnail of this. So most of you who have used uh, objects online, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with thumbnails. Like thumbnails, they just basically present uh, like a summary of what is contained within a feature layer. So over here, I already had a file which contained uh, the URL of the thumbnail which I need to use. So I'm just gonna copy that URL and use it within my and use it within my organization as a thumbnail. So I'm basically going to do that, and I'm just going to paste that out in. So I'm just gonna paste that out in like that. And then what I'm going to do here is uh, this is basically what I need to do. What I need to update my layer with. So I think I'm just going to change the title. Please note that this is really written as a district in Zimbabwe updated. Previously, when we searched for that uh, the web map, we just basically it was written Zimbabwe district. So now I'm just going I'm, I'm just going to rename that to district in Zimbabwe updated. And then I'm just basically going to run that. So it's going to execute that, and it's now trying to change all those uh, all those items and properties we just configured it to change. You see, then it returned uh, a true value again to, to confirm that uh, my code was actually executed without any errors. So now I'm just gonna display the map for you so now for you to see what we've just done so i'm just going to visualize the map the new map now so i'm just going to execute that and then remember what we need to do in order for us to call the map we just need to call the map object just like this without adding any extra input so i'm just going to run that again and then it's going to actually start to load uh, our map Wow, so you can see now that we now have polygons within our map and uh, as compared to what we actually had in the beginning, we had our points and then we had to update our layer and put polygons instead of points. It's actually a good representation if you're representing like our areas such as districts within a country. Um, okay, so now that we have our web map, so this is basically what you need to do whenever you're going to be updating any content in your actual online organization account so thank you guys for watching please like share and subscribe to the channel and for us to keep making more videos and thanks for watching